series on a scripture that we find in 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, beginning of the 18th verse. 1 Corinthians 10 and 18, the Apostle Paul, writing to the church at Corinth. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 10 and 18, reading from the King James Version, Behold Israel, after the flesh, are not they which eat of the sacrifices partakers of the altar? I'm not going to spend too much time reviewing this morning because I want to try to finish this up or we're still going to be on this come New Year's. But Paul was telling them, you are what you eat. If you are a partaker of the altar, Brother Bill, you can't just eat the food on the devil's table without becoming a partaker of the devil's table. Amen. He was saying you can't just take the food that is sacrificed to Baal, to whatever false god it might have been. You can't just take that from the altar and partake of that food and say, well, I did not partake of the altar. Oh, yes, you did. And he's telling them here, he's trying to teach the church that whenever you partake of the things of Satan, you actually partake not just of the altar, but the sacrifice. And he's telling them here that you are what you eat. And I said before, you can see that in the natural. You know, when we eat stuff that's not healthy, we usually show that on the outside. Amen. Amen. And most of us have a problem eating healthy. Amen. Amen. Some people can eat unhealthy and it seems like it doesn't affect them at all. But for those of us who are not that fortunate... We can look at something or get a good whiff of it and gain a pound and a half. Amen? Amen? But you are what you eat, and not just in the natural, not just the things that you eat that affect you physically in the natural, but things that you eat on spiritually. On. So you can't mess around with false doctrine and feed off of that, Brother Bill, and it not bother you, it not hinder you. Amen? You not see some kind of, Sister Nancy, some kind of effects in your spiritual walk with God. But the church somehow has the mindset today that they can fool with fire and not get burnt. Yeah. They somehow have decided that the devil's not quite as bad as our church forefathers told us that he was. Wow. Amen. While we have our children committing suicide into their lives because they have no hope, we've got the church, like I said earlier, sticking their head in the sand and not even acknowledging that we have an enemy. Not even acknowledging that the devil, the Bible says, Sister Nancy, is like a roaring lion that goes about seeking whom he may devour. Amen? We still have, the devil's still real. Amen? Amen? If Jesus is real, so oh, you can get him to believe that. Amen? But when you get talking about the devil, well, I don't know. Oh, yes, he is. Amen? Amen. If there is good, there must be evil. Amen? Amen. On the other side of the scale. Jesus is real and so is the devil. Amen. Now granted, the devil is no comparison to Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Jesus whipped him good at Calvary. Hallelujah. Amen. He didn't have to go to hell to fight him. Matter of fact, the devil ain't in hell yet. That's where he's going. Yeah. The Bible doesn't teach us that the devil's in hell. The Bible teaches us that the devil is on the earth. Going to and fro, seeking for somebody to devour. Trying to kill somebody. Trying to destroy somebody's life. Trying to take somebody and make them his slave. Amen? Amen. So Jesus took care of that. But it's us who do not walk in the victory of Christ. The victory that he won on the cross. Yeah. That we allow the devil to move in with us. Come on. We allow the devil to fellowship with us. Amen? And that's exactly what, see, some people say, well, it don't matter. Just overlook those things, Sister Nancy, and fellowship with them anyway. Yeah, but Paul says that fellowship with devils will affect you. That's what he's teaching the church here at Corinth. That's what we've been talking about for the past two weeks. He goes on to say, but I say that the things, and I'm in verse 20, same chapter. But I say that the things that the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. I would not that you should have fellowship with devils. Now that word fellowship, what do we learn it meant? It means to share with. Yeah. It means to, Brother Bill, associate with. Amen? Amen? It means to be a companion with. See, that's why the Bible says, Know them that labor among you. <clears throat> you may be fellowshipping with devils. It means to be a companion. It means to fellowship. It means to partake. It means to be a partner. It means to spend time with. You hear that? Yeah. It means to spend time with. Our problem is, we spend more time with the devil than we do God. Yeah. Uh-oh. 
Amen. Amen. We spend more time with the devil than we do. We spend more time feeding our flesh than we do our spirit. And then we wonder why we can't grow spiritually. <laughs> then we wonder why we feel the way we do. Why well, I just don't understand why I don't feel the Spirit of God. You ain't going to feel Him on the dance floor. No. Amen. Amen. You ain't going to feel Him on the bar stool unless it's the convicting power of God telling you to get out of there and hit your knees and repent. Amen. Amen. But the church has fellowshiped and how many people know we've been learning this and I'm trying to do the review and go on, but we've been learning that those that you hang around with, Brother Bill, you begin to act like they act. Yeah. How many times have you heard, or maybe your parents told you, you're not going to play with those kids no more because you act like they do. <clears throat> Every time you're around them, you start being rebellious. You start being, you know, back talking or whatever the case may be. See, when you marry somebody, this is a perfect example. I'll use Brother Bill and Sister Nancy. I'm glad they're here this morning. When you marry somebody, how long have you been married? 50 years? 36, 37? 37. 37 years. When you married somebody for that long, you start acting like them. You do. You start seeing things, phrasing things. How many people, ever, how many, you know what I'm talking about, and not just you, but other people that you know. Amen. I know a couple, and I'll leave them nameless, but if you get on the phone with them, some of the same phrases their husband uses, they use. Yeah. Almost the same tone of voice. You couldn't even tell it was them had you not recognized the female voice from the male. Amen. Yeah. But when you when you hang around people, you start acting like them. Yeah. Oh, i got news for you. The same way in the Spirit. Mm -hmm. When you spend more time with the devil than you do Jesus, you start acting more like the devil than you do Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And that's what's happened to the church. That's why there's no convicting power of God in churches anymore because they spend more time with the devil and he don't convict you of anything. Amen? He ain't going to make you feel bad. He's telling you if it feels good, do it. Yeah. But the fellowship that the church has taken on with the devil has spawned false doctrines. It has spawned it. We've got churches that in January or February, whenever it is, they play the Super Bowl. They'll move out their Bible stand. They'll set a big screen TV on the altar. And they'll pass out hot dogs and popcorn. And they'll all root for their favorite team. Why? Because they have fellowship with devils for so long that that stuff doesn't bother them. We had a church up the road that for seven or eight nights in a row put on a horror show during the time of Halloween to try and win people to Jesus. They dressed up like, like a, 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 what are those things from the Night of the Living Dead? I can't even think of them. Zombies. zombies. They dressed up like zombies. They dressed up like the evil spirits. Their pastor preached from a coffin. Yeah. Why? Because they fellowship with devils for so long they're more comfortable with that than they are than they are the things of God. And I'm not pointing out that one church. I'm telling you that's the way it is. And in most churches in America, and I know all of them's not like that, but I'm talking about the largest percentage of them, Sister Nancy, have fellowship with the devil for so long that they are more comfortable with him than they are with God. Amen. 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 They are more comfortable with the devil than they are with Jesus. And Paul says, I would have you to have no fellowship with devils. But the church has the mindset, and I'll show you some other people here that had that mindset, they think they can fellowship with the devil and it not hurt them. They think they can, well, I'll just... I'll try to win these people. Yeah. You'll try to win them all right. You'll wind up the one being one over to their side. Amen? Yeah. You keep going to the same old parties you used to go to, still hanging with the same old friends you used to hang around with, still listening to the same old music you used to listen to, still watching the same old things you used to watch, and you'll find yourself gradually being won over on the other side instead of you winning them. Amen? Amen. But Paul's teaching us that there is a consequence to fellowshipping with devils. You can't play with fire and not get burned. You can't get in bed with a skunk and not come out stinking. Amen? <clears throat> he tells us in 1 Corinthians 6 and 16, this is just a few chapters before, and he's talking to the same church in Corinth. 1 Corinthians 6 and 16. He says, What? Know ye not that he which is joined to a harlot is one body? For two, saith he, shall be one flesh. But he that is joined to the Lord is one spirit with who? The Lord. Yeah. Now see what he's telling us? He's telling us when you join yourself to a harlot, you become one body. When you join yourself to the Lord, when you fellowship with the Lord, you become more like the Lord. I don't think that's too hard for us to figure out this morning. We might not want to realize it. I was telling the postmaster just a few days ago about how that he was talking about somebody that their uh, nephew or someone that they're raising and how much trouble they've had out of him. And I told him, 
he looked at me like I fell out of a well, but I told him, well, I believe that if we would monitor more closely the things, the games that we allow our children to play, the things we allow them to watch, the people we allow them to hang around with, we might see a different attitude in our children today. Amen. You cannot continue to allow your children to feed on all the hellish garbage that Hollywood has to offer and not expect that to affect them emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. Amen. Amen. You can't expect for them to play with with uh, ninjas and cut people's heads off in video games and separate that from reality and not allow some of that violence for the build to take a root inside of them and personify itself or to come to the surface in their own lives. Amen? You cannot expect it, but that's what we've done. That's what we in the church, you can't talk to them about it. They think you're crazy. It used to not be this way. When did it become wrong to believe what the Bible says? Amen? When the church began to fellowship with the devil for so long, they began to believe his word instead of God's word. Now, whenever you stand up and say that it's not right to participate in Halloween, well, you're a hotball. You're a weirdo. You're a fanatic. You're a freak. Amen? It didn't used to be that way. It used to be if you were the one that stood up and said, this is what God condemned and we should stay away from it, you got an amen. Now you get an old me. Amen. And they show you the door. When did this happen? It happened when we started fellowshipping with devils and we became more like the world and more like the devil than we did God. And that's exactly the shape that the church is in today. We go around fellowshipping with anything and everything that comes along because we want to keep that spirit of love. And I'm all for love. Amen. I love you and you love me and you know we just all love. And I, I, amen. I do love you. But the devil don't love you. Amen. Amen. The devil wants to kill you. The devil wants to destroy you. The devil wants to take you like he wanted to take Peter and sift you as wheat. Amen. He has no desire whatsoever for you except to destroy you. To kill you. He wants to steal your joy. He wants to steal your peace. He wants to steal your hope. What do our precious teenagers take their lives? Because the devil has stolen their hope. He's stolen their peace. They feel like they have nowhere to turn. And most of the time, not always, but a lot of the times, mom and daddy ain't around. Amen? We've raised a whole generation that we allow the TV to babysit them. Amen? No more, no more uh, uh, overseen by the parents because mama's got a job, daddy's got a job, and I know people have to work, don't get me wrong, but if you have to work, uh, please filter what it is you allow your children to watch and what you allow them to play and the music that you allow them to listen to, or if you don't, you're going to reap from the seed that is being sowed in their minds. Fellowshipping with devils. We went from not allowing it in our house to letting it be our babysitter. Amen. Uh, and I ain't saying throw out the baby with the wars water, but I'm telling you that it's time that somebody decided, hey, let me take a look at what you're watching. Let me listen to that. Let me see what kind of music it is you've been listening to. Let me see what kind of video games it is that you've been playing. Amen. Let's, let, let me meet your friends that you've been hanging around with. Amen. I ain't liking the things. that. Let me meet these people that you've been hanging with because you may see them as just fun loving and cut ups and you're your best friends you've ever had. But if the spirit of the devil is behind that, if they're lost and undone and fellowshipping with devils, it'll bring you down just like it's brought them down. And we've got children taking their lives in the church. Never even... I challenge you. I, challenge, I don't want you to stay home from church to do this, but next Sunday morning, turn on the television to one of the so-called Christian networks. Get you a pen and paper. And I want you to write down that you have to channel surf to do this because you'll find this in over here and he's talking about your best life now. Amen. I want you to find the ones that mention you have an enemy and that that enemy is the devil. Amen. Brother Bill, what kind of leaders would we have today if right in the middle of a war you had, you had an enemy and they, they were, they, what kind of leaders would we have if they brought all of the troops in and just gave them a pep talk? Didn't talk about strategy. Didn't talk about the enemy. Just said, hey, let's just forget about this war thing. Let's just all think positive thoughts. From now on, let's just all walk around with a smile on our face. Put down our weapons. Go over and hug your enemy and say, you're my brother. You're my brother and you'd be dead. Amen. It wouldn't take long until you'd be dead. And it wouldn't take long for us to remove those military leaders from their position either because 
We don't need people standing behind the pulpit telling you to fellowship with every devil that comes along. We still need some men and women of God that will take the podium and say, this is what God says. Amen? This is what God says. And if anything goes against what God says, it ain't of God. Right. Amen. Fellowship with devils will cause you to lose your relationship with God. And that's what Paul was saying. Paul would have said these words today to this church. It's not what condemned, it's not what God condemned in the past, still not condemned today. Yeah. Is sin still not sin? I need somebody to answer these questions for me because I don't see it right. from the church of today. Amen. I want to know when it when it became wrong to be convicted of things. I want to know, Brother Bill, when it became wrong for me to feel that convicting power of the Holy Ghost saying, you know you ain't supposed to be doing this. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. When did it become wrong? When we fellowship with devils and we started thinking like they think. Amen. Whenever we started doing the same kind of things the devils do because we begin to take on their traits. Amen. We begin to dress up like the devil to win the lost. And oh, I don't see that nowhere in God's Word. As a matter of fact, I find that it says conform not to the world. Amen. Come out from among the world and be separate. Whatever happened to that scripture, brother? How long did you heard that one right there? Amen. Come out from the world and be a separated people. Amen. When did it become okay to sacrifice at the altar of false gods? When did it become okay for me to hug everybody, whether they were Muslim, whether they were Catholic, whether they were Mormon, whether they were Jewish, whatever they were? When did it become okay for me to put my arm around them and say, "Come by, y'all, my Lord," and say, "You got away, and I've got away, and we'll all get to the same place"? No, you won't. You'll accept Jesus, or you'll split hell wide open. Amen. There is no other way to God except Jesus Christ. Christ and Him crucified. He said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. Brother Billy, that will cause division in the body. Well, the body needs to be divided. If you've got people that's sitting next to you in the pew and they don't know that Jesus is the only way and you're telling them that they're alright, you've been fellowshipping with the devil for so long you don't know the truth from a fallacy. Amen. 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 Well, Jesus is still the only way. Amen. He's still the only truth. Amen. He is still the only life. He still is the one that came God in the flesh and dwelt among us and hung on that old rugged cross and said it is finished and made a way for man not to have to go to hell. No other, nobody else did that. Muhammad didn't do that. Allah didn't do that. Amen. So if you're out there today and you're a Muslim, if you don't accept Jesus, you're going to go to hell. If you're out there today and you're a Catholic and you pray to Mary, if you don't accept Jesus, you're going to go to hell. If you're out there today and you're a holiness and you think your works are going to get you to heaven, you're going to split hell wide open. You have to. You must. There's no, there's no way around it. You have to put your trust in Jesus and His blood. If you don't do that, you ain't going. And Paul was telling these people, when you fellowship with devils, bad things are going to happen. Amen. And this is not something that's happened overnight. I told you last week, I think we mentioned it the Sunday before that, the old story of how to boil a frog. Matter of fact, we may name this sermon that. They said that if you took a frog and just threw him in boiling water, he might have enough chance to jump back out because it's hot. But Brother Billy, you take him and you put him in the pot of water when it's cool. And he's thinking, ooh, I'm right at home. Then you turn the heat up just a little bit at a time. Mm -hmm. And the temperature of the water changes so gradually, he don't notice it. He might think, oh, this feels good. But the, David said last Sunday as it got warmer, he'd think, this feels good on my arthritis. <laughs> and he'll think, this feels like a, you know, one of them jacuzzis. Until finally, it gets so hot. He didn't realize it and he can't get out. That's what's happened to the church. The church is the frog being boiled in the water. Little by little, the devil came in. Now you can't get him out. Amen. Oh my goodness. If I didn't say nothing else this morning, Brother Bill, that's enough to shut the Bible and go home. Right. Little by little, the devil came in and now you can't get him out. Oh, if he just showed up on your doorstep, and it's this hideous looking, you know, pointed, got horns on his head and a grotesque face. Well, anybody in their right mind would have slammed the door and run, got under the bed. Amen? Mm -hmm. But 
that ain't how he showed up. He came into your house through cartoons. And it started out as simple stuff. It started out stuff like Scooby-Doo and the Smurfs. Mm -hmm. And now your kids has got into Harry Potter. And it done went gothic on you. A little bit by little bit. The little foxes that look so cute, you allowed them to come in. See, the Bible says the little foxes that spoil the vine. Little foxes grow up. That's what's happened to the church. That's what happened to most of your homes out there that you're having trouble with your kids today. We allowed it to come in a little bit, a little bit. Because the devil, he don't ask for a mile at first. He just says, give me an inch. Give me a little bit. Just, just compromise just a little bit. Compromise just a little bit. Till soon you find yourself in boiling water and can't get out. So you decide to end it all. Amen? Because you can't get out. That's what's happened to the church. The church has fellowship with devils for so long they've taken on his name. That's what happened to Lot. Amen? If you don't know the story of Abraham and Lot, I believe Lot was Abraham's nephew. And he was traveling with Abraham and Lot had herdsmen and had cattle and things or sheep and Abraham had a lot of things and their herdsmen, the ones that watched over the flocks, they begin to fight. And Abraham turns to Lot and he says, we can't have this go on any longer so you decide where you want to go. If you go to the north, I'll go to the east. If you go to the south, I'll go to the west. If you go to the right, I'll go to the left. If you go that way, I'll go this way. However was he told him. So Lot, the Bible says, looks towards Sodom. And because it looks good to the eye, Brother Bill, now if he'd have looked out there, listen to me, get this, I'm facing clothes. If he'd have looked out there and it was barren, ugly, lizards, no trees, rocks, sand, he'd have thought, I ain't going there. Same way with you and the devil. If he showed up in his true nature, Sister Nancy, you'd say, I ain't going there. But when Lot looks towards Sodom, he sees a place that's well watered. Matter of fact, the Bible even compares the way it looked to the Garden of God. The Garden of Eden. It for sure looked like Egypt. So what's Lot do? The Bible says Lot pitches his tent towards Sodom. Now remember, we're talking about little by little. When Lot left Abraham, he had no intentions whatsoever to backslide. He had no, and you didn't either. When you begin to walk away, when you begin to compromise, maybe you're a pastor out there and you thought, you know, if I compromise just a little bit, I could get a bit better crowd for the people. <clears throat> I wouldn't have to compromise a bunch, just on these few little things. Now you don't compromise, compromise so much, you don't preach nothing but marshmallow sermons. But you got a bestseller. Amen. So Lot, he pitches his tent towards Sodom. And what happens to him? <clears throat> The Bible says, and this is Peter talking. You don't have to go here. 2 Peter 2 and 7. It talks about Lot having his righteous soul vexed. How? Because he dwelled among them, the people of Sodom, and in seeing and hearing, Sister Nancy, he vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. Now what this means for us today is that he fellowshiped with them and little by little, day by day, he began to be vexed. He began to become more like them than he did God. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about the frog in the water, amen, the heat getting turned up gradually, little bit by little bit, until finally you can't get out. That's what happened a lot. He pitched his tent towards Sodom, and, the, and Sodom was a wicked city. It was full of homosexuals. You see, homosexuality is still an abomination in the sight of God. You might get more people if you compromise on that stand. You might get some homosexuals to fill your pews. But you and the homosexuals are all going to go to hell. Amen? Unless you get right and get saved. Because homosexuality is still an abomination to God. Amen. So Lot starts out, and you can read this. i got the scriptures up here. I'll give them to you. He starts out by pitching his tent towards Sodom, which means he pitched his tent where the door was open, the, where he could see the city. And the longer he looked at it, the closer he got. Yeah. Till finally we find him, brother, but he's done moved in. He's moved into the city. And Abraham, this whole time, after he hears somebody tells him, you know Lot is over there, 
and he's fellowshipping with them devils, and he's beginning to act like them devils. I don't know how far he had went, but he went far enough to call him brother, amen, and offer his daughters to him. That's pretty bad. Abraham's out there on the hillside saying, God, deliver him. That ain't in exact words, but that's what he was saying. If there is some righteous in there, God, before you destroy Sodom, will you deliver those that are righteous out of there? So he prays and he prays, and God says, I'll do it. I'm going to sin, not because of Lot. His soul's vexed, amen? But he sends angels down there to get Lot. And this is the story. Genesis 19 and 1. We're going to close with this. The Bible says that God sends two angels to Sodom at even. Genesis 19 and 1. And Lot sat in the gate of Sodom. Now, did you hear that? This story, if you'll go back and read it, it doesn't start out with Lot saying, I'm going to move into Sodom. It says he pitches his tent toward Sodom. Yeah. In chapter 19, we find that he doesn't move in. He's in the gate of Sodom. And it says, And Lot, seeing them, rose to meet them. And he bowed himself and his face toward the ground. Reading on Genesis 19 and 2. And he said, Behold now, my lords, turn in, I pray you, unto your servant's house, and tarry all night, and wash your feet, and you shall arise up early, and go on your ways. And they said, Nay, but we will abide in the street all night. Now, Lot ain't going to lie to happen, because he knows what kind of men he dwells with. So when the angels say, No, that's all right, we'll just sleep out here in the street, Lot says, No, I don't think so. Y'all better come in here. You listening to what he's doing here? Hallelujah. He said, Nay, but we will abide in the street all night. And he pressed them greatly, and they turned in unto him, and entered into his house. And made, they made a feast, the Bible says, and did bake unleavened bread, and they did eat. But before they lay down, the men of the city, this is what I want you to get, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, compassed the house round, they surrounded the house, both old and young, all the men. It says, all the people from every quarter, and they called unto Lot and said unto them, Where are the men which came into thee this night? Bring them out unto us that we may know them. Now, biblical language is they wanted to have relationships with these men. Remember, these are homosexuals. And Lot went at the door unto them and shut the door after him. And said in verse 7, Brother Bill, what did he say? I pray you. I pray you. What's he called? Brother. Brethren. Do not so wicked. He had fellowshiped with these devils for so long that he's calling them brother. These men that wanted these angels for their own pleasure, he's calling them brother. He don't just stop there. He says, do not so wickedly. Behold, now I have two daughters which have not known man. Let me, I pray you, bring them out unto you and do ye to them as is good in your eyes. <coughs> Hear that? <coughs> I'll bring my kids and give them to you. These men, at one, if when Lot was with Abraham, I'm sure he'd heard of, he'd probably heard of Sodom. They probably all had. There ain't no way you could have paid him to turn his kids over to them perverts. But he had fellowship with them for so long, Brother Bill, and became so vexed. Now he's saying, listen, just take my kids and do whatever you want to with them. And this hit me like a ton of bricks. The things that the church used to condemn, the devils that the church used to warn about, now they turn their kids over to them, Brother Bill, and say, just do with them whatever you want. Yep. Amen. Amen. Do with them whatever you want. Got Sunday school teachers using Harry Potter to teach Sunday school class. Do with them whatever, whatever you want. Got church Christian people allowing their children to watch any ungodly mess out of Hollywood. Just do with them whatever you want. The same devils you used to warn them against. Just do with them whatever you want. Got Christian parents allowing their children to celebrate Halloween, dress up like witches, and go out and trick or treat. Just do with them whatever you want. Offering their kids up on the altar of Satan. Just do with them whatever you want. That's what Lot was doing with his children. That's what we see today because the church has fellowship with devils for so long they don't see anything wrong with anything they allow their kids to do. Amen. That don't make me very popular, Brother Bill. That won't get me no booking engagements, but it's the truth anyway. Amen? Do with them whatever you want. 
fellowship with devils. You start preaching their doctrine. You start taking on their nature and their attitude. You get to the place to where if you're a preacher, the devil could join your church and never feel an ounce of conviction in any sermon you ever preach. Because you fellowship with him for so long, you're just one of the guys. Amen. He doesn't fear you. Amen. You don't think he's real. Your brother. Your brother. <laughs> you don't think he's real. Oh, you think he's, you know, on a greeting card, the little guy in a red suit, the pointed tail. You think he's on the cartoons, you know. Oh, if you only knew how real he is. Amen. 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 Take my kids. Do with them whatever you want. That's what Lot was doing. That's what you'll wind up doing if you continue to eat off of the altar of the devil. If you continue to fellowship with devils. They don't seem so bad after a while, Brother Rodney. Amen. All that, I used to think that was awful, but I don't, I've don't. i learned better. You learn better because you fellowship with devils and now you think like he does. Amen. But Paul said, I would not have you to have fellowship with devils. The more time we spend in prayer and in the Word and with Jesus, the more like Him we become. So it doesn't take a brain surgeon or some kind of intelligent scientist to figure out the more time we spend with the things of the world and the things of the devil, the more like the world and the devil we become. That's old-fashioned. Amen. That's out of date for the bill. Still the truth. Amen. It still matters what you listen to. It still matters what you watch. Amen. I know they called Granny with her her hair, you know, rolled up in a bun. They called her an old fogey, but she had a little bit of wisdom. It still matters that she spent time with Jesus. Amen. It still matters that you don't. Amen. Amen. It still matters that you don't. Hallelujah. Behoove us all, as Brother Hinton used to say, to make sure we're right with the Lord. And I ain't saying you got to be perfect. My goodness, if you do, we might as well all give up. <clears throat> but we need to pray more than we do. Amen. We need to be more like Jesus than we are. I'll say it for me. That way I ain't stepping on your toes. I need to pray more than I do. I need to be more like I need to show more love than I do. Amen. Hallelujah. My, my, my. Brother Isaac, where you at, son? Come read us the scripture. <clears throat>